In this video, I want to introduce you to prime numbers. Now, a prime number is an integer that has precisely two factors. Now, I want to discuss the first bone of contention that people have, and that is the number one, which often gets mistaked for being a prime number. It is not a prime number because it only has one factor. So one only has one factor, namely one. Okay, just because I can write it as one is one times one when I lay it out the way that I've been doing, we only count that one once. Okay, so one only has one factor, so one is not a prime number. Okay, now what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be finding all of the prime numbers between 1 and 100. And this is referred to as the sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay? And essentially, it is an ancient method of finding all of the prime numbers up to however many, however far you want to go. Okay? Um, and I'll, I'll show you how it works in a moment. So, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to work our way along the list. Don't worry, we're not going to need to go through all of these and find the factors of all of them. Uh, but we're going to work our way along the list. So, we've dealt with number one. That is not a prime number because it only has one factor. So, let's move on to the number two. Two can be written as one times two only with integers, and so it has precisely two factors, 1 and 2. So 2 is a prime number. Okay, we can have that one. Now, because um, every even number from there on must have 2 as a factor, it cannot be prime. So 4, for example, will have 1 and 4, uh, but it will also have 2, so that can't be prime. 6 will have 1 and 6, but it will also have 2, so that can't be prime. So a prime number has precisely two factors, 1 and itself. Okay, That's where the disparity comes with some people thinking that 1 is a prime number. Because if you just describe it as saying it uh, has precisely two factors, 1 and itself, people think, oh, that must mean it's prime then, because you've got 1 and itself, 1. But the true definition is that it has precisely two factors. Okay, So two distinct factors, if you like. So, because we know that 2 is prime, that means we can get rid of all of the multiples of 2. They cannot be prime. So, bye bye 4, 6, 8, 10. All of these can go. Okay, they're all gone. All the even numbers are being got rid of. This is the sieve. So I'm shaking the sieve and I'm getting rid of all the ones I don't want. Okay, and what I'm going to be left with is all of the potential candidates. Okay, almost there. So all of these multiples of 10 have got to go. Bye bye. Okay. Right. So. The Sivir Eratosthenes then says that the next number in the list must therefore be prime. Okay, so 3 is 1 times 3, and that's the only way we can write it. So 3 is a prime number. But then any multiple of 3 must therefore not be a prime number. Okay, because 9 will have 1 and 9 as factors, but also 3. Um, 15 will have 1 and 15 as factors, but also 3. So because 3 is a prime number, 6 is gone, 9 is gone, 12 is gone, 15, 18, 
21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51, uh, 54, 57, 60, 63, uh, 66, 69, 72, 75, 78, 81, 84, 87, uh, 90, 93, 96, and 99. They're all gone. So the next number in the list that I haven't crossed off is 5, which must be prime. 5 is just 1 times 5. So then all of the multiples of 5 cannot be prime. Now I've already crossed off all of those, so it'll be 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95. They're all gone. Okay, so the next number that is not crossed off in the list is 7, which must be prime. So 7 is just written as 1 times 7. So 7 is a prime number, but all multiples of 7 from then on must therefore not be prime. So that would be 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, um, then we're up to 63, then 70, 77, 84, 91, 98. So the next number in this that isn't crossed off is 11. That must therefore be prime. So 11 is a prime number. So I'll write it down here. I'm going to run out of space on this side, so that's as far as I'll go here. OK? So 11 is prime, but all further multiples cannot be. So that would be 11. Uh, sorry, um, 22 rather, uh, then 33, then 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99. I've already crossed all of those off. So the next number in the list is 13, which must be prime. So 13, then 26 cannot be prime, then 39, then 52, then 65, then 78, then 91, okay, and then I'm out. So, next prime number is 17, because that's the next one that's uncircled, or uncrossed off, rather. So 17, so any further multiples must not be prime, so that would be 17, uh, followed by 34, so that would be um, 51, then uh, 58, 68, then 75, 85, and then the next one would be 102. Next one, 19, so 19 must be prime. So 19, then 38, uh, then we're going to have 47, 57, then we would have uh, 66, 76, um, then we would have um, 85, 95, okay, and gone. So the next one in the list is 23, okay, so that is prime, and we can keep on going in this vein. So 29 is prime, then uh, 31 is prime, 37 is prime, um, then uh, next one is 41, that's prime, and 43 is prime, and 47 is prime. 
And by the time you get to this point, well, when I double them um, past this point, they'll be beyond my list anyway. So anything that I haven't crossed off at this point must be prime. So that's 53, uh, 59. Then we've got 61, and then we've got 67, and then we've got 71, and 73, and 79, and 83, and 89, and 97. Okay, so these circled numbers, these are the prime numbers uh, between 1 and 100. OK, now, do I expect you to know all of the prime numbers between 1 and 100? No. Um, but I would expect you to recognise uh, quite a few of them. So if I said, is 31 prime? Now, if you ask me that question, I'd have to think about it for a moment, and then I would go, well... I can't remember it turning up in any of my times tables because you've practiced your times tables uh, quite a lot, okay, uh, between 1 and 100. So if it's a number that you can't remember being the answer to a times table multiplication, then the likelihood is that it is prime. Now there are other little tricks that you could employ. So 51, for example, is likely one that you uh, wouldn't have come across many times because, um, you know, it's uh, 3 uh, times 17. So it's unlikely that you did 17 threes or learnt your 17 times table. But with 51, there is a trick that I can tell me that this has to be divisible by 3. So there are little tricks that you can utilise um, if you add up the digits, so 5 plus 1, and that's 6, if that number is divisible by 3, then this one is divisible by 3. So the fact that 5 and 1 is 6, and I know that's divisible by 3, I know 51 is divisible by 3. That is a useful little trick. So you could use that to do something like, um, I know that... This number is divisible by, um, oh, I'm going to need 8, uh, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, okay? So that number, I know, is divisible by 3, because 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 12 is divisible by 3, okay? So I could add on a 6 onto the end, but I know that's still divisible by 3. OK, it's a pretty neat thing, a uh, pretty neat way of like being able to check those. So there are little tricks that you can use. Has it been in, in any of the times tables that you've learnt? Um, and is it divisible by three? That's quite a useful trick. But I would expect you to know um, probably, de definitely 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Um, I'd expect you to probably know up to 30. So those the, the prime numbers up to 30 are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. If you know any more past that point, that's a bonus. Okay? And maybe you'll be able to identify them just because you don't recognise them being in a times table.